Hi, in this video we're going to be talking about phylogenies, which are evolutionary relationships between organisms. Now before we jump into all of that, I just want to quickly talk about taxonomy, which is the old sort of science of defining groups of organisms based on shared characteristics. Now when I say this is an old science, I just mean that this idea, this uh, approach of trying to organize organisms actually dates back very, very far. In fact, uh, Aristotle, famous ancient Greek philosopher, uh, tried to come up with his own version of taxonomy that he called Scala Natura. Now, you don't need to worry about any of that, but it's important that we talk a little bit about how organisms are classified before we jump into their evolutionary relationships. So today, all life is broken into three domains, and those are Eukarya, Archaea, and Bacteria. Now, Eukarya, those are eukaryotes, like you and I. But both archaea and bacteria are prokaryotes. Now, there are many more levels of classification and taxonomy. After domain, you have kingdom, which groups organisms into things like the Animalia kingdom, which is animals like you and I. There's also plantae, that's where the plants fall under. But we don't really need to worry about the specifics of kingdoms or phyla or class or order, family, because quite simply, all of that is very fluid. It's constantly changing. Taxonomy is actually fraught with, uh, fraught with problems in terms of classification. And, and probably the best example of this is the protist kingdom which is kind of the garbage heap for taxonomy. It's more or less where uh, taxonomists put organisms that they just don't really know what to do with. So taxonomy has a lot of issues. However, it doesn't mean it's useless. It's still very useful to try to group organisms, to try to separate groups of organisms, to further our understanding of ultimately evolutionary relationships. So before we diverge from taxonomy, I just want to talk about species, because that's really where our conversation is going to take us. We're going to be talking about species a lot as we talk about evolution. So you and I, we are part of the same species. That's the kind of the smallest grouping that you get in taxonomy. So our species is sapiens. Now you might be saying, wait, I thought we were Homo sapiens. Well, Homo is actually our genus name. And when we talk about an organism and give its scientific name, we always give the genus and the species name. So Homo is our genus, sapiens is our species. An example that we've already talked about actually of a bacteria genus and species would be, let me take myself out of the image here so you can see this is Streptococcus pneumoniae. And that's the bacteria that gives you pneumonia. So, just want you to be aware of what taxonomy is, but we don't really need to worry about the specifics because quite frankly, they're probably not even covered in your textbook and you might not even talk about them in your class. That's okay. I just want you to sort of have a, a general understanding of what's going on here so that we can turn and talk about phylogeny. So phylogenetics falls under the broad category of systematics, which is the study of life and the relationships between living things through time. So this is a really big umbrella category and phylogenies specifically explore the evolutionary relationships between groups of organisms and normally these are displayed in something called a 
phylogenetic tree, which is like the one you see here. It's a branching diagram that shows inferred evolutionary relationships between species. And that term inferred is important because quite frankly, we don't know for sure. A lot of this is based on inference. So not hard evidence, but inferred relationships. And that's okay, that doesn't take away any value from this, it's just important to put it in perspective. And you'll see why when we turn the page and talk about how to read a phylogenetic tree. So let's do that now.